The Gold Standard from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia at en.wikipedia.org, as read from a version dated 1630 on the 4th of December 2007. The Gold Standard is a monetary system in which the standard economic unit of account is a fixed weight of gold. Under the Gold Standard, currency issuers guarantee to redeem notes upon demand in that amount of gold. Governments that employ such a fixed unit of account, which will redeem their notes to other governments in gold, share a fixed currency relationship. The gold standard is not currently used by any government or central bank, having been replaced completely by fiat currency. However, private currency backed by gold is in use. Section 1. Why gold? The history of money consists of three phases. Commodity money, in which actual valuable objects are bartered. Then representative money, in which paper notes, brackets, often called certificates, close brackets, are used to represent real commodities stored elsewhere. And finally, fiat money, in which paper notes are backed only by the traders, quote, full faith and credit, close quote, in the government. Gold was a common form of commodity money due to its rarity, durability, easy divisibility, brackets, fungibility, close brackets, and the general ease of identification, often in conjunction with silver. Silver was typically the main circulating medium, with gold as the metal of monetary reserve. Commodity money is troublesome and risky to transport, vulnerable to debasement, and subject to hoarding. It also does not allow the government to control or regulate the flow of commerce within their dominion with the same ease that a standardised currency does. As such, commodity money gave way to representative money, and gold and other specie were retained as its backing. The gold standard variously specified how this backing would be implemented, including the amount of specie per currency unit. The currency itself is just paper, and so has no innate value, but is accepted by traders because it can be redeemed any time for the equivalent specie. A US silver certificate, for example, could, brackets, and still can, close brackets, be redeemed for an actual piece of silver. Representative money and the gold standard protect citizens from hyperinflation and other abuses of monetary policy, as was seen in some countries during the Great Depression. However, they were not without their problems and critics, and so were partially abandoned by the international adoption of the Bretton Woods system. That system eventually collapsed in 1971, at which time all nations had switched to full fiat money. Former US Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan has argued that the fiat money system of today has retained the favourable properties of the gold standard because central bankers have pursued monetary policy as if a gold standard were still in place. Section 2. Disadvantages Beyond the difficulty in transporting, storing and preventing the debasement of gold, one of the main disadvantages of the gold standard is that it artificially inflates its value, increasing the cost of items and industrial processes in which it is used. The total amount of gold that has ever been mined is estimated at around 125,000 tonnes. At the former gold price of around USD $640 per troy ounce, or around $20,000 per kilogram, the value of this entire planetary stock would be USD $2.5 trillion, which is less than the value of currency circulating. In the United States alone, more than $7.3 trillion is in circulation. Under the gold standard, gold mined at a different rate than the economy grows can produce both inflation when deposits are discovered and extraction and deflation when they are mined to exhaustion. In practice, the production of gold has usually trailed economic growth, resulting in periods of severe deflationary pressure, including events during the Great Depression. Finally, Using a fixed commodity as a monetary standard gives central banks substantially fewer options with which to respond to economic crises and stimulate economic growth. Section 3. History. See also History of the English Penny. Section 3.1. Early Coinage. The first metal used as a currency was silver more than 4,000 years ago, when silver ingots were used in trade. 
Gold coins first were used from 600 BCE. However, long before this time, gold, as per silver, was used as a store of wealth and the basis for trade contracts in Al-Qaeda and later in Egypt. During the heyday of the Athian Empire, the city's silver tetradrachm was the first coin to achieve international standard in Mediterranean trade. Silver remained the most common monetary metal used in ordinary transactions until the 20th century. The Persian Empire collected taxes in gold, and when it was conquered by Alexander the Great, this gold became a basis for the gold coinage of Alexander's empire and those of his diadochi. The vast gold hoard of the Persian kings was put into monetary circulation, triggering the first known, quote, worldwide, close quote, inflation event. The Roman Empire minted two important gold coins, the Aures, which was seven grams of gold alloyed with silver, and the smaller Solidus, which weighed 4.4 grams, of which 4.2 was gold. These values only apply to the early empire. Later, Roman and Byzantine coins were frequently alloyed with baser metals in an attempt to expand the money supply. The diner and dirham were gold and silver coins, respectively, originally minted by the Persians. The caliphates in the Islamic world adopted these coins starting with caliph, and due to issues with pronunciation, it is spelt A-D-B space A-L dash M-A-L-I-K, who lived from year 685 to 705. In 1284, the Republic of Venice coined the Dusat, its first solid gold coin. Other coins, the Florin, Noble, Grolsch, Zloty and Guinea were also introduced at this time by other European states to facilitate growing trade. Beginning with the conquest of the Aztec and Inca empires, Spain had access to stocks of new gold for coinage in addition to silver. The wide availability of milled and cob gold coins made it possible for the West Indies to make gold the only legal tender in 1704. The circulation of Spanish coins would create the unit of account for the United States, the dollar, based on the Spanish silver real, and Philadelphia's currency market would trade in Spanish colonial coins. Section 3.2 The Crisis of Silver Currency and Banknotes, brackets, 1750 to 1870, close brackets. In the late 18th century, wars and trade with China, which sold many trade goods to Europe but had little use for European goods, drained silver from the economies of Western Europe and the United States. Coins were struck in smaller and smaller amounts, and there was a proliferation of bank and stock notes used as money. In the 1790s, Britain suffered a massive shortage of silver coinage and ceased to mint larger silver coins. It issued, quote, token, close quote, silver coins and overstruck foreign coins. With the end of the Napoleonic Wars, Britain began a massive recoinage program that created standard gold sovereigns and circulating crowns, half crowns and eventually copper farthings in 1821. In 1833, Bank of England notes were made legal tender and redemption by other banks was discouraged. In 1844, the Bank Charter Act established that Bank of England notes fully backed by gold were the legal standard. According to the strict interpretation of the gold standard, this 1844 Act marks the establishment of a full gold standard for British money. There were 113 grains, brackets 7.32 grams, close brackets, of gold to one pound sterling. The US adopted a silver standard based on the, quote, Spanish milled dollar, close quote, in July 1785. This was codified in the 1792 Mint and Coinage Act. This began a long series of attempts for America to create a bimetallic standard for the US dollar, which would continue until the 1930s. Because of the huge debt taken on by the US federal government to finance the Revolutionary War, silver coins struck by the government left circulation, and in 1806, President Jefferson suspended the minting of silver coins. The U.S. Treasury was put on a strict, quote, hard money, close quote, standard during business only in gold or silver coins as part of the Independent Treasury Act of 1846, 
which legally separated the accounts of the federal government from the banking system. Following Grisham's law, silver poured into the US, which traded with other silver nations, and gold moved out. In 1853, the US reduced the silver weight of coins to keep them in circulation. Section 3.3 Establishment of the International Gold Standard Germany was created as a unified country following the Franco-Prussian War. It established the mark. Rapidly, most other nations followed suit. Gold became a transportable, universal and stable unit of valuation, and the world's dominant economy, the United Kingdom, had a long-standing commitment for gold standard. See also Globalisation. Section 3.4. Dates of adoption of the gold standard. Bullet point. 1717. United Kingdom. At one pound to one one three grains, brackets, 7.32 grams, close brackets, of gold. Bullet point. 1854. Portugal. At one thousand real to one point six two five eight five grams gold. Bullet point. 1871. Germany. At 2,790 gold marks to one kilogram gold. Bullet point. 1873. Latin Monetary Union. Brackets. Belgium. Italy. Switzerland. France. Close brackets. At 31 francs to 9 grams gold. Bullet point. 1873. United States. De facto at $20.67 to 1 OZT. Bullet point, 1875. Scandinavian Monetary Union, brackets, Denmark, Norway and Sweden, close brackets, at 2,480 krone to 1 kilogram gold. Bullet point, 1875. Netherlands, at 1 guilder to 0 0.6048 grams of gold. Bullet point, 1876, France internally. Bullet point, 1876, Spain at 31 pesetas to 9 grams gold. Bullet point, 1878, Finland at 31 marks to 9 grams gold. Bullet point, 1879, Austria, brackets, C, Austrian florin and Austrian crown, close brackets. Bullet point, 1893, Russia at 31 rubles to 36 grams gold. Bullet point, 1897, Japan at 1 yen to 1.5 grams gold. Bullet point, 1898, India, brackets, C, Indian rupee, close brackets. Bullet point, 1900, United States, de jure. Throughout the decade of the 1870s, deflationary and depressionary economics created periodic demands for silver currency. However, such attempts generally failed and continued the general pressure towards a gold standard. By 1879, only gold coins were accepted through the Latin Monetary Union, composed of France, Italy, Belgium, Switzerland and later Greece, even though silver was, in theory, a circulating medium. Section 3.5. Gold Standard from Peak to Crisis, brackets, 1901 to 1932, close brackets. Section 3.5.1. Abandoning the Standard to Fund the War. The British government ended the convertibility of Bank of England notes to gold in 1914 to fund military operations during World War I. By the end of the war, Britain was on a series of fiat currency regulations, which monetised postal money orders and treasury notes. The government later called these notes bank notes, which are different from US treasury notes. The United States government took similar measures. After the war, Germany, losing much of its gold in reparations, could no longer coin gold, quote, Reichmarks, close quote, and move to paper currency, although the Weimar Republic later introduced the, quote, Rentenmark, close quote, and later the Goldback Reichsmarks, in an effort to control hyperinflation. In the UK, the pound was returned to the gold standard in 1925 by a somewhat reluctant Winston Churchill. 
Although a higher gold price and significant inflation had followed the World War I ending of the gold standard, Churchill returned to the standard at the pre-war gold price. For five years prior to 1925, the gold price was managed downward to the pre-war level, causing deflation throughout these countries using the pound sterling. This deflation reached across the remnants of the British Empire everywhere the pound sterling was still used as a primary unit of account. The British government abandoned the standard again on September 20th, 1931. Sweden abandoned the gold standard in October 1931, the US in 1933, and other nations were, to one degree or another, forced off the gold standard. Section 3.6 Depression and World War II Section 3.6.1 British hesitate to return to gold standard During the 1939 to 1942 period, the UK depleted much of its gold stock in purchases of munitions and weaponry on a, quote, cash and carry, close quote, basis from the US and other nations. This depletion of the UK's reserve convinced Winston Churchill of the impracticality of returning to a pre-war style gold standard. John Maynard Keynes, who had argued against such a gold standard, became increasingly influential. He proposed a more wide-ranging version of the, quote, stability pact, close quote, style gold standard, later expressed in the Bretton Woods Agreement. Section 3.7 Post-War International Gold Standard Brackets 1946 to 1971 Close Brackets See Main Article Bretton Woods System Section 4 Theory The theory of the gold standard rests on the idea that inflation is caused by an increase in the supply of money, an idea advocated by David Hume and that uncertainty over the future purchasing power of currency depresses business confidence and leads to reduced trade and capital investment. Section 4.1 Differing Definitions of Gold Standard If a monetary authority holds sufficient gold to convert all circulating money, then this is known as a 100% reserve gold standard, or a full gold standard. In some cases, it is referred to as the gold species standard to more easily separate it from the other forms of gold standard that have existed at various times. The 100% reserve standard is generally considered unworkable because the quantity of gold in the world is too small a quantity of money to sustain current worldwide economic activity and the quote right close quote quantity of money brackets i.e. one that avoids either inflation or deflation end brackets, is not a fixed quantity, but varies continuously with the level of commercial activity. In an international gold standard system, which may exist in the absence of any internal gold standard, gold, or a currency that is convertible into gold at a fixed price, is used as a means of making international payments. Under such a system, when exchange rates rise above or fall below the fixed mint rate by more than the cost of shipping gold from one country to another, large inflows or outflows occur until the rates return to the official level. International gold standards often limit which entities have the rights to redeem currency for gold. Under the Bretton Woods system, these were called, quote, SDR, close quote, for special drawing rights. Section 4.1 Point one, perceived stability offered by gold standard. The gold standard, in theory, limits the power of governments to inflate prices through excessive issuance of paper currency. It is also supposed to create certainty in international trade by providing a fixed pattern of exchange rates. Under the classical international gold standard, disturbances in the price level in one country would be wholly or partially offset by an automatic balance of payment adjustment mechanism called the, quote, price specie flow mechanism, close quote. At the time of the Bretton Woods Agreement, it was believed that markets were always internally clear. Say's law. However, in practice, wages, not capital, depreciate in price first. Section 4.1.2 Mundell Fleming Model According to modern neoclassical synthesis economics, the Mundell Fleming Model describes the behaviour of currencies under a gold standard. 
Since the value of the currencies is fixed by the par value of each currency to gold, the remaining freedom of action is distributed between free movement of capital, an effective monetary and fiscal policy. One reason that most modern macroeconomists do not support a return to gold is the fear that this remaining amount of freedom would be insufficient to combat large downturns or deflation. Section 5. Advocates and Opponents of a Renewed Gold Standard the return to the gold standard is supported by objectivists, followers of the Austrian School of Economics, and many libertarians. It is opposed by the vast majority of governments in economists, because the gold standard has frequently been shown to provide insufficient flexibility in the supply of money and in fiscal policy, because the supply of newly mined gold is finite and must be carefully husbanded and accounted for. In theory, paper money printed based on the finite amount of gold will go up in value as it becomes rarer. Few economists today advocate a return to the gold standard other than the Austrian school and some supply ciders. However, many prominent economists have expressed sympathy with a hard currency basis and have argued against fiat money, including former US Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan and macroeconomist Robert Barrow. Greenspan famously argued the case for returning to a gold standard in his 1966 paper, quote, Gold and Economic Freedom, close quote, in which he described supporters of fiat currencies as, quote, welfare statisists, close quote, hell-bent on using monetary printing presses to finance deficit spending. In debates with U.S. Congressman Dr. Ron Paul, Greenspan has argued that the fiat money system of today has retained the favourable properties of a gold standard because central bankers have pursued monetary policy as if a gold standard were still in place. The current monetary system relies on the U.S. dollar as a, quote, anchor currency, close quote, which major transactions, such as the price of gold itself, are measured in. Current instabilities inconvertibility and credit access restrictions are a few reasons why the current system has been criticised. A host of alternatives have been suggested, including energy-based currencies, market baskets of currencies or commodities. Gold is merely one of these alternatives. In 2001, Malaysian Prime Minister Mahitma bin Mohamed proposed a new currency that would be used initially for international trade between Muslim nations. The currency he proposed was called the Islamic Gold Diner, and it was defined as 4.25 grams of 24 carat, brackets, 100% close brackets, gold. Mahavir Mohammed promoted the concept on the basis of its economic merits as a stable unit of account, and also as a political symbol to create greater unity between Islamic nations. The purported purpose of this move would be to reduce dependence on the United States dollar as a reserve currency, and to establish a non-debt-backed currency in accord with Islamic law against the charging of interest. However, to date, Mohammed's proposed gold diner currency has failed to become an accomplished fact. Section 6. Gold as a Reserve Today Main Article Official Gold Reserves During the 1990, Russia liquidated much of the former USSR's gold reserves, while several other nations accumulated gold in preparation for the Economic and Monetary Union. The Swiss franc left a full gold convertible backing. However, gold reserves are held in significant quantity by many nations as a means of defending their currency and hedging against the US dollar, which forms the bulk of liquid currency reserves. Weakness in the US dollar tends to be offset by strengthening of gold prices, Gold remains a principal financial asset of almost all central banks alongside foreign currencies and government bonds. It is also held by central banks as a way of hedging against loans to their own governments as a, quote, internal reserve, close quote. Approximately 25% of all above-ground gold is held in reserves by central banks. Both gold coins and gold bars are widely traded in deeply liquid markets and therefore still serve as a private store of wealth. Some privately issued currencies, such as digital gold currency, are backed by gold reserves. In 1999, to protect the value of gold as a reserve, European central bankers signed the quote, Washington Agreement, close quote, which stated they would not allow gold leasing for speculative purposes, nor would they 
quote, enter the market as sellers, close quote, except for sales that had already been agreed upon. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU Free Documentation License, available at www.gnu.org stroke copyleft stroke fdl dot html.